So, so let's get to it. Uh, first thing I want to mention to you is the SI schedule. Now, here it is. I just got it this afternoon. Uh, so Monday, uh, 3.30 over in Business Admin, room 218. Business Admin 1, uh, room 218. Uh, Wednesday, you have two mega sessions um, in, wow, Business Admin 1, second, second floor is like, the nerve center of, of supplemental instruction this semester. So those are in the afternoon on Wednesday, and there's two of them, which is good because you have two sessions between Tuesday and Thursday uh, lectures. Then you have one uh, Thursday morning. So uh, so I, I guess Monday afternoon will be good if you want to make sure you get homework ready for Tuesday afternoon. So this seems to be good, I think. Uh, the next uh, SI sessions uh, are tomorrow, Wednesday. So, uh, and why don't you stand up again for everybody. This is, uh, go ahead and introduce yourself one more time. Good. Thank you, Jasmine. So uh, she is awesome, and she helps students get good grades. Uh, so try to make it to at least one or two. If you can make all four, you're golden. Uh, you're going to really start crushing things. Uh, and I'll try to have this up every day so you don't have to. And it's already up inside web courses, and uh, you can see it. So, okay, prepare for iClicker uh, work. Now, if you don't, if you haven't used it yet before, uh, in this class we're using frequency BC. So hold the power button down, uh, and then until it flashes the little rectangle in the upper left, and then type in BC. And after that, you'll get a Go Nitro message, and then ready. And when you see Go Nitro, that means you're on my frequency, and my computer just told you that. It's reading you, okay? So when you see Go Nitro, that means you're ready to go, all right? And uh, so, and, and we're going to use BC for this semester. So, um, and if, if this is the only class where you use iClicker, you don't have to do it every day. You just have to do it once. But if you have another class where you use, you know, like frequency A, B, or something like that, uh, then you're going to do it every day, you know. But it's just do this, and it's pretty easy, all right? So now, um, before we do the actual questions, let me just recall uh, from last week, we uh, finished uh, from last time, uh, this equation, which expresses uh, the amount of distance or the change of position x uh, as a function of time, if you know the uh, velocity v, the speed v, all right? And it's basically just speed times time. Now, many of you have seen and heard about distance equals speed times time since maybe, um, you know, uh, middle school or so. Now, I didn't learn about it until I was in high school. So if you learned about it in middle school, you're way ahead of where I was. But uh, we're going to do this today, and we're going to do a little sample calculation using clickers. Uh, and just to remind you, delta x is the notation that we use to indicate a difference in x-coordinate measurement. So x2 minus x1, that's a difference. In other words, we're not adding them, we're subtracting them. And it's usually the later minus the earlier. So x2 minus x1. And that's going to give you a distance interval. All right? Or a dis it'll give you a displacement. It might be negative. That means you're going to the left. Okay? That means your position changed by a negative number uh, of meters. That means you went left, you know, four meters or something. Now, delta T is similar, but it means that you've got an elapsed time interval. So elapsed time, delta T, that's the later time, the, the clock measurement, T2, minus the clock measurement, T1. And again, that's later minus earlier. 
Okay. And we did an example of that last time. Now we're going to do some examples with this now. And uh, uh, here we go. Uh, first, eye clicker question, the skateboarding pooch. Um, two different events, event U and event J, you have the position and the time for each. All right, calculate the distance between the events. Go ahead and vote for that. And you know what? You may as well jot down these specs because we have three questions about this skateboarding hound dog here. So jot down the coordinates. And uh, and then, you know, most of the time, my, um, my clicker questions are, are good for your notes, you know. So... Okay, 15 seconds to vote, starting right about now. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Wow, 100 people voted. That is lovely. Now let's take a look at what you voted for. Okay, let's take a look here. Uh, ah, okay, most of you voted for C. I got to get ah, Looking over the back of my shoulder like that is rough. Uh, C is correct. Um, 1.43, that's the distance. And uh, here's how you calculate it. Uh, delta X, the uh, X coordinate for event J must... Are you going to talk like that all through class? Because I can hear you up here. Yeah, over there by the wall. When you when I can hear you up here, that means everybody else in the room can hear you. And we don't want to be distracted by that. All right? All right, now I've had to yell at you twice today. Don't, don't, please don't continue with that. The same with you guys over here. I know you, some, some of you guys over here were talking. It's very distracting to me, and it's kind of rude. All right. All right, so here's your calculation. X subscript J minus X subscript U. That means the X coordinate for event J, which is up there in the in the, the problem itself, at minus the X coordinate for event U, uh, and that's 2.50. So 3.93 meters minus 2.50 meters is uh, 1.43. In general, just to reinforce... Anytime you have a delta for any quantity, you know, so like some generic quantity, H, uh, it's always the later value of H minus the earlier value of H. So that's for any delta. Okay, and I'm, you know, H doesn't stand for anything. It just stands for some generic physical quantity. All right, so remember that the deltas, then that's usually uh, what the deltas are. You know, start uh, finishing point minus uh starting point, coordinates, or values, if it's not a coordinate. All right. So that's good to remember in general. Now, here's uh, question number two. Uh, what is the uh, elapsed time? All right. So this is just a little mini calculation, and hopefully, you know, Hopefully you can understand what to do here. And I think many of you did on the previous one. Let's see what you guys got here. Yeah, we're doing good here. Okay, 10 seconds to vote. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. 106 people voted. Very nice. Um, and most of you got it correct. 1.4 seconds uh, is the correct answer. Uh, and here's how you calculate it. Oops. Do this. There's your calculation. Delta T. So it's the later time minus the earlier time measurement. 
So T subscript J minus the clock measurement at event U, which is uh, 3.2 seconds. And, you know, delta T uh, elapsed. Please sit. Yo, please sit uh, forward of that point. Row K or, or forward. Make yourself at home anywhere you like. Um, your stop a stopwatch. You know, if you have a, an iPhone, it's got a you know a clock and a stopwatch you can use, and that's what a, this is what a stopwatch does automatically. So it, it looks at you know your 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 iPhone has a time, uh, so it takes the time measurement of the the end point, the the last point, and the time measurement of the start point, and it subtracts it, and that's what a stopwatch does. All right, based on in the onboard clock inside your iPhone. All right. Any questions about these first two questions? Yes. I have a question about the overall clicker. Um, I have a preferred equation. I type in an answer and have a check mark. Does that mean just typing the answer itself submits the question? Yeah. When we're on multiple choice, all you got to do, it, which is what we're doing now, um, all you have to do is type in A, B, C, D, or E. And you'll get a little check mark, and that means – Got, that means that's my computer telling your clicker, got it. Okay. All right. Okay. The next question coming up, um, the check mark will go away waiting for an answer, right? I think so, yeah. Okay, because I found an answer and it had a check mark and now it doesn't. Yeah, because so I, no yeah, I, I stopped the question. Okay, thank you. Yeah, we're in between questions. Now, I want to go to a numeric question now. So you're going to type in a number. Now, this one's going to be a little different. Um, uh, we did a numeric question last time. And uh, so hit the refresh key. That's the blue key that's got a little squiggle on it. Okay. Oh, I think it's on the left side of your, your unit. Um, and let's go to it. Okay. Calculate the average speed. Now, you've already got the uh, numbers. On this one, type in... Um, to the nearest 0 0.01 meters per second of speed. So something, point, something, something, and then hit the send key. When you're doing numeric, you got to type the send key because it doesn't know when you're done typing in numbers. you got to tell it, all right, that it'll send it, and then you'll get the check mark, all right? So make a calculation. This is delta X over delta T, and we just calculated those. Now, when you're doing your calcul when you're doing your clicker questions, it's okay to talk and check with your neighbor to see if they have the same number as you, or work it out. But of course, on a test, you can't do that. But in class, yes, it, I definitely like that. See, and I see, I see somebody in the back going like this and pointing at the diagram stuff. That's great. I love to see that. So if you have a friend in, in this class, definitely sit with them. And just kind of get your, your heads together and, you know, work on stuff as you go through class, as you go through lecture. Let me see what you guys are looking at here. Okay, now round off to the nearest uh, zero point something something. Okay. The decimal, I should have, can you put it up to 100%? The decimal is really hard to see. Um, uh, the decimal is, uh, I don't know, I think it's, you go down below the zero. It, is, that, is that right? Yeah. And it's really tough to see. But if you're typing in zero point something, you have to type a zero. You can't start with the decimal point. You have to type zero and then the decimal point. If you're typing in four point something, you got to type in the four and then the decimal point. You can't lead off with a decimal point. 30 seconds.
15 seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Okay, 104 answers, good. Now, um, uh, m the correct answer is 1.02. Most of you got that. Um, let's take a look over here. It's, let me see if I can turn around and do this. All right, here's the... Here's the uh, rundown. Now, the the true answer is up here. Correct answer is up there. But some people typed in a few others. Let's see if I can move this down a little bit. So here's somebody, 1.021. Eh, didn't round off correct. All right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to expect you to round off the way I ask you to. All right. So that might be uh, partial credit but not full credit on a test. Uh 0.89, 1.01. You can see 1.43, that's the distance. Uh, anyways, I can look at all these things. Now, on a test, if I give you a calculation item on a midterm, you know, so in other words, like on a midterm, I might give you 40 Scantron questions, one point each, and then four clicker questions you know, two, two or three points each, calculations. And so when I look at your calculation, it'll look like that, and I'll be able to say, okay, this person forgot to round off, so they don't get three points, I'll give them two points. You know, you can have partial credit. Now, the nice, and that's nice, because, on, of course, on a Scantron test, you can't get partial credit. You either got it or you don't, okay? So uh, we will be using eye clickers on exams uh, for that reason. And, you know, it might just be one or two calculations, uh, three or four. It just depends on, you know, what I feel like when I write the test. Okay. Now, here's the uh, – let me get this out of the way here. Oh, Dr. B. Oh, okay. Uh, let me get my clicker back over here. Yeah, here's the calculation. For those of you that, that missed it, yeah, delta X, that was our first question, 1.43 meters. Delta T, that goes in the denominator. Uh, that was our second question. And so this question puts them all together. All right. Now, last week, now let me pause for questions. Anything you want me to review on this? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Hold on a second. Yo, in the, in the, in the maroon, in the, the lavender shirt back there with the specs. Got a question? Good. All right. I saw you guys, you know, checking back and forth. That's good. I'm glad. You know, I just was wondering if you had a question. See, I'm always trying to observe you guys and see if you're, you know, if you're, if you're engaged with, you know, the problem and stuff. So I'm always looking. And that's why I'm trying to, that's why I try to sit forward here so I can see everybody. So good. Let's keep going. Now we're going to switch modes again. Uh, we're going to type it. So hit the refresh key. And we're going to do a problem um, in which you type in letters. Now the, the letters are just like numbers. But you have the whole alphabet. And then you have to hit the right arrow key to get to the next letter. And then you get to the next letter. You, you know, type it in, you know, go up and down and get the next letter. And then as many letters. And I think you have as many as 14 letters. Okay, so you can write a word or a phrase or a set of letters, and then you have to hit the send key again. So hit the refresh button, and uh, here's your question. It's I want you. To, so this is kind of like a I don't know, like a crossword puzzle. There's a table of eight, uh, 17 items, and I want you to make. And so this is like a goofy. It's like a Chuck Norris question here. Just write something that you seem to think is interesting out of this code table. So, for instance, CBA, sharks consume Cheetos. Okay? But don't type that in because I already invented that. 
Okay, so you have to invent your own code. You have up to four. Don't use 14 letters. But, you but you know, just be creative. All right. And we will be using this kind of question strategy from time to time in lecture for scientific questions. All right. Where you type in an answer. And this is nice because I'll look at every single answer. Now this is some this is some dipsy remark about snack concepts, snack techniques. Okay. Uh, but you know, you know, when we, we get to using this for real, it'll be a scientific question, you know, like about accelerations or something like that. Okay. And then I'll be grading it really carefully. And the nice thing about this is you know, if you think about it, a multiple choice question on a Scantra test, I write everything. You don't have to think. I mean, you have to think, but I write the, the correct answer and the wrong answers. You can't even make a wrong answer that I haven't already put in there. All right. But this, this, every single person in here can write a correct answer and it might be completely different, slightly or quite a bit different, depending on the question I ask you. And I love that. I love seeing how you guys think. This, uh, more than anything else, will t tell me how you think about snacks. My SI leader is up here right in front of me eating, I don't even know what that is. Trail, Trail mix? <laughs> All right. Now, uh, 30 seconds starting right now. So don't write a, you know, a sonnet or anything. Just, you know, something, something catchy. We'll look at these answers. Let's see if you guys are with the program here or what. Twenty seconds. Ten. No, that's. No, Okay. 10 seconds. 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Okay, now this, this is going to be interesting. <laughs> You know, look at this. Let me get this over here. Go to 50%. 50% impulse power. Okay. Look at this. ABC. Oh, what is that? Cheetos consume sharks. Uh, not. ABN. Cheetos consume my... My friend. My what? Wait a minute. Who used the letter N? Oh, here's another one with the letter N. Now, what is this one? Oh, my goodness. Uh, AGK. Uh, Cheetos. Wait a minute. I got it right here. AGK. Uh, Cheetos always purchase KN. My best friend, Justin Bieber. Uh, runs, what? F, F, whenever, uh, runs, French, consume French fries. Well, that's not exactly coherent, but let's go to, I will just go, you can see, you know, here's one of the interesting things. Now look at this. I told you that everybody could write in a right answer and look at that. There's nobody. There's no questions here where people are are uh, repeating. Most of there's a couple of people that have the same. There's two two. Uh, but like these ones are all one person. You see that? So let's go down here. Oh, here's somebody with all three. Let's look at that one. M G B D. I always consume French fries. Sweet. All right, so that that's that. Now I believe that that is, you know, at least three people in here that, you know, have that concept. So that's good. Um, let's uh, let me get my cursor back here. Okay, 
So now this is just kind of a goofy question to test out this business of typing in letters. But now I'm going to ask you a scientific question of the same kind. Here we go. A scientific sentence. You're going to make a scientific sentence. And here's your code table. Describe the motion of free fall. Use that code table to make a true phrase or sentence. Now, I could ask something like this on a, an exam. And what I would do is translate all your symbols that you transmit into a sentence. All right, so take a minute to do that. And hey, why don't you why don't you write down the code ta table as well so you have it in your notes and write down the code that you send. Nobody sent in anything yet, but So for instance, MCQ maniacs are everywhere. Hear that? People are clicking in letters. Hear that? Describe the motion of free fall. Yeah, it's right there. Right there at the top. And use that code table. And uh, and now what we'll do is we'll look at some of these and see if they're righteous or not. Now, you don't have to, you know, you're not writing a physics textbook, but, you know, you've seen free fall every day of your life pretty much since you were a baby. I mean, well, if you, you know, since you were a toddler anyway. And I love this because you can be creative with this and still be completely correct. And I will read it very, on an exam. If I ask you a question like this, um, I'll look at every single, and I'll read every single, per you know, 150 sentences. Every single one of you's. So just think and jot down the code table as well. And, you know, the thing about this is you can't, I can't write in the right answer because what I have to do is just grade it. You know, these ones are tough to grade. You know, I got to, do this big spreadsheet and stuff, but I could do it. It's not that bad. Okay, uh, 30 seconds. I've got 99 responses. 20 seconds. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Okay, good. 106 responses. Great. Um, let's take a look at, um, actually, let me stop the question. Okay, so here are the results. And let's take a look at some of these results. Uh, the letter A. Okay, I'm going to bypass that one. Uh, let's look at this one. ACH. Uh, Speed is constant. Actually, that's wrong. Because in free fall, you're going faster and faster as you free fall, right? Until you hit terminal velocity and then, you know, then you stop accelerating. So if I was looking at that one, I would have to, I'd have to mark that one down. Let's look at the next one. Uh, ACN. Uh, speed is 
accelerating. Yeah, that's not bad. You're gaining speed as you go down. All right. And let's take a, let's just take a stroll through the rest of the uh, the list here. Uh, you can see we got a lot of people with one, one person like A I N N P S C. Uh, that's oh, it's, it's kind of a long one. But there's a lot of people that just that there's only one response. And the thing is, each one of these might be correct. And if it is, you you will have written the correct answer and gotten points for it. And so to me, what is this PPP business? It's faster. <laughs> okay, okay, that's right. That's good. Good. Lovely. Good. Good. See, now that's, you know, I would have never thought of that. But somebody's got a sense of humor, and they typed that one in. That's great. Uh, so, anyways, that's now. Um, so that's a that's a legitimate scientific question, and I'm asking you about your description. All right. Now we're going to use questions like this from time to time in class, and it will be really helpful for us because we want to think about stuff like free fall. We want to think about stuff like uh, interaction of. Uh, gravitational interaction or electrical interaction and stuff. So we'll, from time to time, we'll use a question of this type. Okay. Uh, so let's keep going. All right. Uh, we're we're going to go back to clicking in a few minutes, but let's, let's talk about free fall. Chap and this is actually from Chapter 2.2. .2. Uh, so you can start reading it to Chapter 2 after today. Um, Galileo used free fall um, that we were just talking about faster, 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 p, 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 uh, as the simplest acceleration to study. And he used it to model all accelerating systems. Now, if you're in a, you know, a Camaro, a Bumblebee Camaro, and you're out there trying to do a quarter mile, see how much you could speed you could build up. And in a Bumblebee Camaro, you could get up there, all right? Now, you're not in a Lamborghini, but, you know, Bumblebee Camaro is pretty nice, all right? And now that's not going to be like free fall because, you know, you got to shift and stuff, so the acceleration is not going to be constant. But Galileo thought that, uh, you know, free fall, constant acceleration all the way down uh, was the simplest acceleration that there is. And so he started working on that. Now, I want you to think about free falling for about a second before you pull the ripcord. Here's a question for you. Go ahead and write this question down. You know, physics and all of science is about questions and finding an answer, a physical answer that's got a mathematical core to it. Uh, how fast do you fall after uh, one second of free fall, you know? There's a question for you. 9.8 meters? Incorrect. 9.8 meters per second. That is the... My son keeps texting me here. My son was in an accident yesterday, so that's why I had to... In, in case you came to office hours yesterday morning, I had to cancel it because my son was in an accident. So anyways, be that as may. Uh, so yeah, 9.8 meters per second is, is how fast you'd be going. Now let's let's before we get to the nitty gritty of accelerations due to gravity, let's talk about average and instantaneous velocity. Now this is going to be a lot of stuff from chapter one and then into chapter two. Now the the average velocity or the average speed is based on a finite number of position and time measurements. So if you take you know, you know, like in our clicker questions, we had two position measurements and two time measurements. Now, those are basic, basic uh, measurements that, you know, we have a meter stick uh, to make distance measurements with. And we have a clock of some kind, stopwatch maybe, to make time measurements with. So we can always do that. All right. And you can get a speed out of that. To get an average speed, you got to do it a few times, at least two times. And then you add them up and divide by two. The thing about that is you don't know 
necessarily, you know, if if you know the speed um, of that you're at, that you're at as now, what's your name again with the white sweatshirt? Brendan. As Brendan said, 9.8 meters per second downward speed. Yeah, after one second of free fall. But what happens, you know, at 0 0.74? You know, that that might be nice to know. You know, so, uh, so you know, what is the guy doing between those two times? All right. And you don't necessarily, if all you know is the average speed, you don't necessarily know. Now, an, an example of that um, uh, we're going to get to is the tortoise and the hare. So, so this guy in free fall, he wasn't the same speed all the way down. In free fall, uh, he sp just write down P, 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 P for, for part B here. 2B. You can just write P, 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 P. Faster, 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 faster. Whoever wrote that, you're, I'm going to look you up and figure out who wrote that and give you an A for the day. That, that makes my day. I love that. And you know what? I'll love everybody's uh, answers be, uh, on that if they're if they're on the mark because um, I love to see you guys thinking and creating. And you can definitely do that in this class. Now let's talk about tortoise and the hare. All right, there's a fancy one. You know, the tortoise he just starts out for the goal and he just keeps chugging. Now he's not very fast, but he keeps chugging along. You know, going at you know, uh, you know, one mile an hour or something like that, but he does not stop. Now, the hare, you know that part of the story, too. The hare is really fast. He's blazing speed. He's a wide receiver, you know, and the, the tortoise is like, a, you know, the coach's grandma, okay? So, she, you know, she can walk, but she's not, she's not going to be dashing down the field very fast. But, you know, little old ladies, they can be pretty tough. And that tortoise, he was tough. He just kept going. And the tortoise the, and the hare, you know, he's fast, right? Blazing speed, 4-4 four, four speed. Uh, but he took a nap. You know, he said, okay, I'm almost there. Let me take a nap. And while he was napping, the tortoise caught him up and won. All right? You can read about that in, in Chapter 1, the fable of the tortoise and the hare. Another example from the textbook uh, the Turkey Lake Service Plaza example, uh, one dash in in uh, section one dash ten. Um, so let's talk some more about the tortoise and the hare. And here are the two basic dynamical ideas uh, in that story. And go ahead and make a sketch. This is the speed versus time sketch. All right, and this is actually from the textbook my physics lecture notes. Um, once the tortoise gets going, his speed at any instant of time is pretty much the same all the way through. So his average is going to be, you know, uh, 100 meters per minute. Um, and, he, you know, after the first minute, he's up to that speed, and he just, he just keeps it there, all right, until the cows come home. All right, so that would be his – that would be – that is a description of his motion in an English, a couple of English sentences there, okay? And Aesop's fable, you know, they made a fable out of it in sentences. But this is basically, you know, representing what Aesop was telling, talking about back in the olden days. Now, the other guy, the hare, his velocity changes several times. Now, his speed versus time graph, it's not going to look flat at all. This is what it's going to look like. You know, maybe something like this. He starts out fast. Then he, he, he slows down a little bit over here in the second and third minutes, but he's still cruising way faster than the tortoise. All right. Then he speeds up. You know, he's, you know, he's, he's you know, just flexing his, his muscles. And then he slows down. And then he just, just you know, he's like, man, I – this is a, such a walk in the park. That turtle is toast. And so he stops. Notice his speed goes down to zero. And you can figure out his distance, as I do in the textbook. And he's pretty close to the goal. I think it's 2,700 yards or 27, yeah, 2,700 meters. But, you know, the tortoise, he's just cranking. You know, and he's just go, go, go. 
And uh, guess who wins, you know? Who guess who wins? So in terms of the instantaneous speeds, uh, the speed as a function of time, pronounced V of T, um, for the tortoise, it's a constant. You know, about 100 meters per minute, I think is what I have in the textbook. And for the for the hair, it's all over the place. You know, you'd have to have a bigger table for the for the hair. You know, you just have to have two numbers for the tortoise. You know, his first minute and then all the other minutes. Uh, but for the hair, you had a bunch of things, and he got one big zero goose egg for his last few minutes, in which he gets caught up by the tortoise, and then the tortoise uh, wins the prize. All right. Now let me let me pause before we continue. Pause for questions. Okay, let's keep going. I want to show you something that's useful about the tortoise's graph. And we're going to make this into a, a general principle. And that is the tortoise's graph is pretty close to rectangular. Go ahead and make a note of that. You know, this mythical tortoise from Aesop's fable, you know, they didn't think about it in the, these terms, but we can. His velocity graph, his velocity versus, versus time, is pretty much a, a nice rectangle, except for that very first minute. All right. So we could think of an, an abstract case where an object is traveling at a constant speed from the very first second until some later time. Now, how does that look? Let's make an abstract graph of constant velocity versus time. So here's how we're going to do it. Okay. This is going to be similar to the tortoise's graph or an idealization of the tortoise's speed graph. All right, so one meter per second. Let's say, so draw yourself a vertical axis and put a, a marker for plus one meter per second. And then uh, below the time axis, that's the horizontal axis, a minus one to signify minus one meters per second. So this is a velocity graph. And it indicates the direction. Uh, positive is rightward uh, and uh, negative uh values is leftward so this graph the dotted lines the dotted line signifies like the tortoise something just chugging along at a constant speed one meter per second now that's about two miles an hour all right so that's not even walk you know most of you guys walk faster than that okay and those little scooters out there they they zip along a lot faster than that I'm going to have to try one of those. You know, I'm going to have to try it where if I fall off, I won't totally, you know, break my, you know, like on the sidewalk or something like that. All right. So that, that straight line, that, 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 that corresponds to an, an idealization of the tortoise's graph. You know, he had that one, the first minute that he was, you know, getting up to speed. And then after that, he was at that, yeah, so this is this is his graph idealized to uh, at the top speed from the very first second. Now the time axis, just go ahead and draw that out to the right, the t axis, and let's just go out 2.5 seconds just for you know a nice round number, All right? So here's an object uh, that is um, uh, going out from t equals zero to t equals 2.5 seconds. Um, and it's moving in a constant velocity rightward. Okay, why do I say rightward? Because it's a positive number. So if, if this is the positive direction in the x-axis, you know, like on, on graph paper, you know, when you do x, y graph paper, you know, this is the positive direction for x usually, and then this is the negative direction for x over here, and then positive y is this way, and negative y is this way. So if you're going this direction, your velocity is, you know, positive number of meters per second. Every second you get another few meters, however fast you're going. 
okay? Uh, but if you're going to the left, if you're going this way, you get another uh, negative. Your displacement is in the negative direction towards deeper and deeper negative numbers on graph paper. So that would be somebody down here in the ah, down here in the lower half of the graph. Now we're doing rightward motion, but if we were doing leftward motion, you know, we could, you know, we would graph it down there. Okay, so no big uh, problem. All right. Uh, the op so we say that the object is moving at a constant velocity, one meter per second rightward, for 2.5 seconds. Now let me ask you a question. Uh, the horizontal graph. Uh, this thing encodes all the instants of time visually. All right, we have a dotted line, but it's meant to represent the speed at all the times, not just the average speed. All right. So this is like a radar gun blasting you every billionth of a second, which the cops can do. And it just takes them a very short time to get your speed. Not that you guys, I'm sure nobody in here is a, you're all nice young men and women that obey the speed law. But it has been known for, for people to break the speed law. Guilty as charged. I've been, I've gotten speeding tickets myself. And they do it. It's very quick. All right. But this, this is to represent instantaneous. Now, I want you to uh, look at that graph, and I want you to shade in the rectangle that it forms between the graph itself, that's the dotted line in this diagram, and the time axis. All right, so it looks, so it looks something like this. Okay, so shade in that. Make a rectangle out to 2.5 seconds in width and then one meter per second in height. And just kind of shade that in with lines or, or specks or dots or something like that. Okay? Now, I already told you that that graph, that dotted line graph, it represents the object's velocity nicely. But let me ask you this. What does the area represent? Does the area of this rectangle represent anything? Uh, engineering X. The engineering guys know what you, you know what I've drawn heading for here. Okay, so let's take a look at what the area means. Okay, base times you know area rectangle base time side. Everybody knows that. Okay. That's standard, all right? Now, let's look at what the base and the height are. The base is 2.5 seconds, all right? And the height is one meter per second. Now, that's in, in this graph. Now, if you're on graph paper, it's going to be, you know, uh, 1.5 uh, centimeters maybe and two centimeters high or whatever size the, the graph is on graph paper. But this is abstract. So my vertical dimension jet is uh, meters per second. And my width is a time measurement, okay? In this case, 2.5 meters per second. Now, do you notice anything about that product? 2.5 seconds times 1 meter per second. Notice anything there? Think. What do you see? Oh, wait a minute. What's your first name? Caitlin. What do you see, Caitlin? Caitlin answered, would the answer be in meters per second squared? The answer is no. Look at it carefully. Mm. Little formula for what do you see? It is. It's the amount of distance, just like you were saying. What else do you notice in this as a calculation? If you were doing this calculation, now not all of you might will notice this, but I think some of you will. What's nice about this calculation? Yeah. It's simple. It's simple, yeah. Base time, so that's pretty basic. Uh, uh, what do you – with the specs in back, not you – yeah. Mm -hmm. um, however, 
That's not a bad idea. That's not, yeah, because it's one meter per second. Yeah. So however many seconds you go, that's how many, right, very good. There's something you're missing that you would want to do if you were, you know, like doing algebra and stuff. Uh, can you speak up a little louder? Your voice is so low I can't hear it. That's correct. Anything, but there's something here that we can do to this equation that you've already, you, you. what's your name? Andrew. Wait a minute. What's your name? Justina. And what's your name back there? Faith and Justina and Andrew and the rest of you guys. I'm trying to learn names. So, Andrew. Ding! The seconds cancel. And that's why, Caitlin, it's not meters per second squared. Seconds gets canceled. So what is this? What does it end up being? Not meters per second squared, but just meters. And that is a distance. All right? So how can we... And so there's your answer, 2.5 meters. So what this tells us, you know, we're looking at an idealization of the tortoise's graph, you know, which is pretty much, you know, the same all the way across. And so what we found is that it's kosher to interpret the area of this graph between the graph and the time axis as the distance traveled. In this case, the distance to the right. Now, if you had a, a rectangle like this, base times height, below the time axis, it would be leftward motion, and so you'd be changing your x-coordinate somewhere over in this direction. That's all right. You just got to remember, below the axis, leftward motion. Above the axis, rightward motion. All right? So, um, and as, what is your name again? Andrew, there's multiple Andrews in here. Raise your hand if your first name is Andrew. Just two? Well, you know what I say, two Andrews in the same room? A good start. Anybody with a middle name, Andrew? Nice. So that's your backup. All right. Anyways, I'm just goofing around. But Andrew was saying um, that this is like the, the speed equation that we were just looking at yeah it's all consistent this is a visual interpretation of this formula okay so that that distance rect that's what i call the distance rectangle if something is going at a constant velocity you know like a car heading down to miami on the turnpike and you got cruise control on there's your distance rectangle. That's your distance polygon. You, that thing, you, get, you use that to figure out your distance. It's basically using this formula. So if you want to think visually, think the rectangle. If you want to think in terms of a formula, think that, for, you know, delta X equals V delta T. All right? V delta T, V is the height. Delta T is the width. All right? And delta X is the displacement, the distance traveled. All right? Now. We're going to do some more clicker questions, so turn them back on if they're off. Frequency B, C, and let's do some thinking. All right, now hit the refresh key, and now we're going to be back to multiple choice, so let me slot this over here. Okay, now multiple choice answers, all you have to do is Hit one of the five A, B, C, D, or E buttons, and then you don't have to hit the send button. So here's your question. Each dot here represents a snapshot. So this is like a strobe photo. It represents a snapshot of the position of an object moving from point A to point E. And elapsed time, delta T, is 0 0.1 between each of the flashes. Okay? So answer me, riddle me this. Which of those four statements is righteous? Let me see what you guys are answering. 
Well, that's kind of interesting. Okay, move this. Okay, 15 seconds starting now. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Okay. Now, let's look at this one. If you look at this, we got a spread of answers. You know, we don't have just one pile at the correct answer. Right? We got some. Now, this tells me that there's a little bit of difference of opinion here, which is good. That means we got to talk it over. All right? So let's talk it over. All right? Let me bring this back over here. Okay? Now, the distance from A to B, that's the biggest distance. It's also the earliest distance, distance interval. Now, between A and B, between those two flashes of the flashbulb, 0.1 second. Now, go down here to D and E. Now, those two guys are right close together, and that's the last distance interval traveled. So that, that might be like one meter, and then A to B might be about... 10 meters or something, all right? Now, but there's, it's a strobe photo, you know, simulated strobe photo, and so there's a tenth of a second between each one, all right? So is it, at which end is it faster? At the left or the right? It's faster over here on the left. All right, and it's it's kind of pokey over here. So this is Grandma Moses over here, all right, and then this is that guy. Uh, I can't crank my neck around that far. I'm not an owl. Oh, okay, this guy over here from A to B, that's like that's like some uh, DB in the NFL that can really blaze, okay, or a wide receiver. Wait a minute, who's that guy? For the uh, Titans, Henry. Derrick Henry. That guy is big, and he's also fast. So this is Derrick Henry over here, and down here is his grandma, okay? Derrick Henry's grandma, bless her soul, okay? So that means this thing is slowing down. Now, now Derrick Henry, now this is not a picture of an NFL player, but you can definitely say that this one is slowing down. So there's your, there's your correct answer. Now, we're going to keep going here. We want to interpret a velocity graph for something um, like that, but it's speeding up, and it's speeding up downward. Okay, that one was slowing down. Okay, different distances, getting smaller and smaller. Um, now we're going to do something that's speeding up, but it's speeding up. Down. What is it that speeds up on the way downward? Free fall, yeah. Okay, so we're going to think about free fall here. Okay, so let's try to in, do a, a velocity graph for something that's speeding up downward. So now this one is going to be a little different. The vertical axis, I want you to, to label it as V with a Y subscript to indicate the vertical velocity. Okay, so if this thing, you know, if it's a baseball going upward, you know, a straight pop-up, you know, you'd have a positive VY. Okay, but if it's in free fall, it's going downward. So we're going to have some negative values for VY. So we're going to be down here on the bottom half of this graph. All right. Now, here's one second. And just put, put a few more uh, time marks out there. Go out a few seconds. Okay. And now we're, we're starting, for, we're going to assume that we're starting from rest. So over here, we're going to start. This is going to be a long semester with me cranking my neck around like this. Maybe if I get a mirror. No, that wouldn't work because then everything would be reversed image. I'm just going to have to do some yoga for my neck or something. Okay, so we're going to assume it starts here. 
and then after one second, it's down here. Because we know that in free fall, after one, you know, you start at zero, you start at rest when you're in the airplane, and then you jump out of a perfectly good airplane and you start getting some free fall action. Okay, so you're gonna have, so somewhere down here, it's gonna be, um, and as, what was your name again? Brendan. Brandon or Brendan? Brendan. As Brendan mentioned, yeah, after one second, it's your your speed is 9.8 meters per second going downward. So it's a negative 9.8 meters per second on this graph. All right. Now, it, if you just stay in free fall, it's going to keep going down there. So let's just make a kind of a dotted line graph. Okay, at that that particular slope. Now you may be you might have a slightly different slope than me, but try to make it a straight line once you get your dot there for the first second. So one second, comma negative nine point eight, and then draw a line through, from the origin through that line and on down. Okay. And so Let's keep going. Uh, you could put another uh, for two seconds down there. Just kind of eyeball that one in. And just go ahead and eyeball it if you can, three seconds out. And, you know, every second you're getting another uh, 9.8 negative. So, Brendan, after two seconds, first second, negative 9.8. Second second, another negative 9.8. Total is negative what? Raise your hand if you want to answer me. Negative what after two seconds? Uh, Andrew. That's right, the Andrews. Negative 29.4, incorrect. Caitlin. Negative 19.6, 2 times 9.8. For the first second, you get 9.8. Second second, another 9.8 negative. Total, negative 19.6. After the third second, what do you got? Negative, negative 29.4. Anybody verify that? Negative 29.4 times for three seconds. Yeah, that's right. Okay. All right. So on and on. All right. Now. So this is the velocity graph. Now let's make a velocity polygon here or a distance polygon. And remember, from the graph to the time axis, that's our displacement, all right, the area of that. So go ahead and shade that in, all right? So for every second of free fall, you acquire another 9.8 meters per second of downward speed. And there, my wonderful students, is a triangle. Now, what's the area for a basic triangle? How do you calculate that? What times what? One half times one half base times height. Go ahead and write that down. We're going to use that for this one. Why not? It's a triangle. You know, we're not. We don't have meters. You know. On the y-axis, we got meters per second. We don't have meters on the horizontal axis. We got seconds. But still, you know, what half base time side. You know, we haven't canceled out the laws of geometry on graph paper. We just tr changed the axis, the name of the axis. All right. Now, this is my wonderful students. This, this yellow box here, you know, we've got the distance uh, triangle in there. And... This is Galileo's assumption about gravity. Now, how did he test it? What he did was he went up to the top of the, uh, the Tower of Pisa. Here's a picture of it, sketch. And raise your hand if you've actually been to Pisa in Italy. Anybody? Wow. Is it, did you go to see the, the Leaning Tower? I saw a picture of it on the Internet. And there was people nearby, and, you know, you could see. And I was thinking, that thing, it's like really leaning over. 
it's it's you know this doesn't look like you know oh that's no big thing but it it really is it's you know it's amazing that it's still up anyway so he took um uh a a, a pair of different objects the myth the story goes now galileo never wrote about it one of his assistants wrote about it that he took like a cannonball and a musket ball and dropped them at the same time and they hit it pretty much the same time all right and that was he was able to use that experiment to verify this principle that um, you're uh, continually acquiring new increments of speed uh, for every second that you're in free fall. Now he didn't measure th well he might have measured things in seconds I guess but they didn't he didn't, he was the first person to invent a clock. He invented the pendulum clock or the whole he invented the idea of it. Somebody else actually invented the machine, but he figured out that it, a pendulum clock would work. And he had a water clock and stuff like that. Uh, but you know what else he used? His heartbeat. He used his heartbeat, you know, which is good. So let's take a look at um, this calculation. Okay. Accelerate. This is your definition of acceleration. The change in the speed, delta V over the change in the time, delta T, the elapsed time, all right? It's a ratio, all right? So the acceleration tells you how much speed you get per second or, you know, how much speed you get in a tenth of a second. If, if that's the time interval that you care about, you can figure that out, all right? And, and in fact, um, it tells you how much speed you get in a certain amount of time um, and that is basically from this equation here. Now, this the second equation is just the first equation cross multiplied, delta T over to the other side. So now you have A delta T, all right? And that tells you basically what Brendan and uh, Caitlin and the rest of us were thinking, you know, how much speed you get from gravity. For every second, another negative 9.8 meters per second downward. Second, second, another negative 9.8. And that's what this tells you. Take the acceleration and multiply by how many seconds you got, and that tells you how much speed you have acquired. All right. Now, let's take a look. Uh, let me pause for questions here. Yes. So I what is your name again? JC, okay. So I understand that the acceleration formula is obviously defined acceleration, but when you put down the velocity formula with acceleration in mind, is that to see a difference in acceleration? That's to see a difference in the speed. Okay. This the second one tells you, JC, um, it tells you how much speed do you acquire, delta V? How big is your change in your you know, Galileo said you get equal increments of speed for every increment of time. Okay, and that's what this, this equation says. Your delta Vs are always the same. If your delta T is the same, your delta V is the same okay. for gravity. Now, if you have a, like a rocket that's losing a lot of mass out the tailpipe, you know, when it's launching from Kennedy, that's not a constant acceleration. It's a very difficult problem. But for free fall, pretty basic. All right. Now, the bottom one shows the amount of speed that you acquire for some increment of time, delta T. All right. Whether it's a second or whether it's, you know, that guy that jumped out of the air balloon, uh, Baumgartner, you know, and he was up at the edge of space. I don't even want to think about how long he was in free fall. Can you imagine, you know, minutes, you know, one second of free fall for me, you know, jumping off the high board at the pool is, is a lot for me, but, um, all right. Now here's one more thing to look at. As I mentioned, the area of this triangle will interpret as the distance. And for this one, the, the width is one second, all right? 
And so the it's you know so that's the width, and then the height is is down here 9.8. So basically the area one at base times height for the it works out to one half at squared. Okay, because at is the is the uh, height and t is the width. All right, now we're going to work some more on this distance triangle on Thursday. For tonight, I want you to work on homework one, and it, I think it'll be active in just a few minutes. You can get it to web courses, look on the homework list, and you're golden. That'll be due tomorrow, uh, Thursday at 1030. Or, no, that should be 1.30 p.m. You're dismissed. Turn it up to 100% power.